Ryan, have you ever thought about being an architect? Have you ever thought about being a truck driver? Have you ever thought about being a salesperson? What about something in the medical field? Realtor? Listen to Career Pass every Thursday. Wherever you listen to podcasts. And on YouTube. You might learn something. You might not. It's your life. Make Make it happen. Memories fade. Career pass. Yeah, I'm so ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, this, and somebody's going to really go wrong now when he says we're ready. <laughs> Usually he doesn't say he's ready, so I'm scared. Are you scared? You ever need your keys? Get your cell phone off, mister? Cell phone is there. So huh. yeah. it's just, Technically, it's off for what it's supposed to be and not a, and on for what it's supposed to be. Technically. Technically. We'll like, see how that goes. That's, how does that work out on some of the stuff? Are you ready, Brian? Yeah. What? You ready? So ready. I don't know so if I'm ready. ready yet. Wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> Welcome to Career Paths by Infonet. I'm your host, Victor Boudreaux, with Mr. Ryan King. Hi, Ryan. Hi. Hey, look who we got back, Mark. I know. So excited. We're, we're doing update oh. interviews with a former guest. Mark was on eh, a little bit ago, not too long ago. Uh, Mark, you're a pilot, right? You were right. a pilot. Now you're... Now you're retired, correct? I'm still a pilot, but yeah, okay, I'm thank you. Retired. Yeah. I'm not the <laughs> quick. I can't retire from anywhere. It. And we have anybody listening to audio can't see what it is. <laughs> I, that's right here, doggone it. That's, Mark wrote the book. That's right. He gave one to me. I can't read it, but he gave one to me. So thank you. See right. <laughs> yeah, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you don't have adult children, do you? I don't have. I don't have children at all. It's probably a good thing for this okay. world. Yeah. <laughs> oh goodness. So let's we'll go, go over the basics. Wait, did I get all that? We, we took a couple weeks off, so I've been cruising around. I got that part. We're good there. Um, welcome, guys. How, how's things going, Mark? In general, we're around the holidays. Are you ready for Christmas? Oh, absolutely. Sure. <laughs> we got we got a great Christmas tree this year. You know, we live uh, you're out there, less than a mile from a Christmas tree farm that everybody drives to to get oh, the okay. trees. I know you're and, out there, uh, out that way. Uh, it's great up there. And uh, we've always gotten a 10, 11 footers, you know, for the great Did group. you see the one you, mine you all, you didn't see that, did you? That's how small it was. Uh, it's a little Charlie Brown thing. We went, we went to a smaller tree, but this thing is beautiful and full. Oh, great, great tree. Ryan and I will wait for our invitation for dinner really soon, but. <laughs> okay, come on up. We'll wait really soon. <laughs> we won't get it really We won't soon. get one. We'll, we'll still on. be waiting. Come on up to Elk. Yeah, we, we don't know where we're going, but just Elk. Joking. <laughs> well, I can get us close. <laughs> it's close to the tree farm. Yeah, it's about a mile away from the tree farm, so if we yeah. go start driving around. <laughs> So, Mark, married, kids, um, grandchildren. We're just coming to some of the basics as I get something in my eye from Ryan that must be love. Yeah. It, it's got to be. Yeah. A little uh, twinkle. That's what it was. <laughs> We're going to have to start the whole show over just because of you. I'm going to talk to Mitchell and Paul. I always about wonder what cue cards look like. I, or notes that I got Ours water terrible, on. terrible because he wrote them. I wrote them and I don't care if you just can't read them. <laughs> Your helicopter is suffering. Uh, again. Yeah, we start out. We start out with smaller ones, but we thought we we're gonna get some bigger ones. But Ryan it's, it's all in the wrist. Ryan, go ahead. Flip a card. You got one. Flip it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I'll just go over newspapers. Let's see if I can. Nope. Eh. <laughs> no worse than any. Nope. So. Basically, how long have you been? How long were you flying? Basically, when you, uh, I guess, thirty-five yeah. years. Thirty-five, and, and before that, I was a mechanic for ten years. And when you were on the first time, we discussed uh, how and what you some of the stuff you went through to fly and do the training and schooling. And I'm trying to remember everything, but um, it wasn't always easy. No, absolutely not. And 
That being said, not to go through the, if somebody's curious, listen to the other podcast with, with Mark on it. But you've done research to do with the differences from, let's say, back then to more now and how that's changed. That's one reason I asked you to come back when you said that. You're like, hey, you do more research than we do. So what would you say is a major difference, just one major difference, and we'll get into it from then to now that surprised you? Jeez, I don't know which one would be the the major difference. Uh, it seems to me that um, what we were talking about uh, previously was uh, the difficulty that, that the PR people, uh, the HR people, have uh, determining who's going to be a suitable pilot. Right. Because you, when, you, when you're hiring a pilot or, or a flight crew member, you're... you're you have to hire someone who isn't going to cave in when the red lights come on. Um, you know, the, it, it's just so difficult to tell. And I, I myself didn't know, and I always had this question mark until I had my first emergency, was I, I wasn't sure how I was going to react. react. You know, when the chips are down mm -hmm. and, and death is on the line here. Um, what happens in, uh, up, upstairs? Right, right. You check out, or what happens? And Light or flight. so the the HR people they don't know. They've got this group of individuals who have applied for the job, and they have to sort out. And I think that's one of the most common uh, denominators between 1960 and 2021. Um, they still have that problem. Okay, and that's what I was gonna say. They're it, not just, it's still they're not sure. And what's also the same is learning to fly is extremely expensive. I do remember. And I I couldn't have done it if I hadn't had a, a, a loan from my family made it together with um, VA benefits. Right. I, I came out of the Navy and, and, uh, and I used the GI Bill uh, they had just approved it for flying. Before that time, it was not approved for flying. Uh, oh, you could go okay. to college and you could do all kinds of things, but quote unquote real jobs. I'm joking. Get, yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, yeah. okay. <clears throat> so there's a lot of similarities, and the the um, shortage of pilots is is identical to what was going on in back, um, back then. The early to early 60s to eh, three quarters of the way through because uh, Vietnam was uh, uh, 65 on up and it and so pilots that were in Vietnam were starting to come out onto the, the market so it wasn't such a tight uh, hiring market but right now um, they the FAA still has the rules in place that that you, you can't dummy down right. to, to get more applicants. Right, right. You still have to maintain that standard. Um, right. A certain number of hours of flight time, a certain number of, um, well, <laughs> experience. I, I, I can't talk about that, but um, you have to have a physical. Right. Um, Heck, you have to have a physical to do and yeah, other, yeah, just not even flying. But. There's there's three levels of physicals, um, uh, basically the same as truck drivers uh, and other uh, people that have to have uh, FA or federal approval. Um, it's it's uh, the the best requirement they can do is ask for the uh, class one, the most restrictive. Uh, the most thorough physical. Okay. Because um, <clears throat> if you come in with a, um, a class three, and a year later <laughs> you can't pass the class one, <laughs> they've lost out. So I don't know the difference. Ryan, you drive. He, Ryan drives truck. He has a CDL. Is there anything like that on that? Different physical or just one that you do every? There's year? just the one that we have to do. Okay. They don't have. Okay. Different classes for us. Oh, that's right. 
That's right. I used my FAA medical when I was exercising my CDL. Mm. I, was, I was driving for my son. He had a trucking company. Um, that's right. I use because yours is good for, let's see, the CDL one is good for two years. Yeah, right? two years. Okay, well, the, the class one's only good for six months. Mm -hmm. Wow. You have, to, you have to come back every six months. Well, it'd be a little, well, flying a plane would be a little more, uh, you know, I'm not saying that driving truck isn't, but you're in the area and got more, I would think, uh, more to deal with in some ways. Um, yeah, it's, it, I don't know, there's a discussion you could have over that, but um, it, when you when you get to be uh, a captain, then you have, you have to reprove yourself in the simulator every six months. Oh, wow. And twice a year. And you have to have ground school once a year. So you have a recurrent ground school. Um, if you fly oceanic, you have to, uh, every couple of years, you have to inflate the rafts and, oh, okay. uh, you know, learn. You know. I always thought when I, when I fly, that I never know if that's, anybody knows what to do really. Like, I know they talk about it at the beginning of a flight, but. Flying is one place where the people in the cabin are very well qualified. Stewardesses and et cetera. Oh, yeah. on, okay. Yeah, I'm just saying, I'm not calling me. I, it has always made me wonder, you know, they're like, well, in case of a water, you know, yeah. like, the rafts and blah, 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 and it's like, <laughs> do you know this, <laughs> or you're just repeating something that you were taught? Well, yeah, right. you actually... that, that canned speech, um, <laughs> some of them break away from it, you yeah. know, and, and yeah. ad lib a little bit, but uh, that, that's all mandated by the FAA. Yeah. And, um, um, but... I'll tell you what, it, they know where everything they need is. If you if you are having a heart attack, they know where the defibrillator is. They they know how to use it. And um, you know, if you're if you have a fire in the in the, one of the biffies. Um the biffy, what's a biffy? Uh, uh well the <laughs> biffy biffy's a <laughs> I'm just uh, asking. Biffy's an in house term at the yeah. PSA. Obviously. Um, well, it's an in they, I didn't know what it was. I'm, they, I'm, Generally call them the labs. Okay. Or, or not, but the okay. The Biffy started because the uh, there's a local company here uh, down there called BFI oh. that services okay. the honey buckets. Okay. The, they, there you they go. Don't, Thank they, you. That's not, now I know. <laughs> I now you know what a Biffy is. <laughs> and why it's there. Yeah, Thank I, you. I could have gone all day without saying Biffy. <laughs> it's okay. I have to answer. <laughs> People that watch this show want to know. Okay, maybe I just want to know. Back off. <laughs> I keep forgetting about that. Sure. <laughs> so, you know, maybe I'll I'll change because you know, I deal with the porta potty stuff a lot, and you know, we'll call them honey buckets all the time. That's yeah, right. call, you can call them a biffy so now. Start calling them biffies. Biffies and people. Like, what the <laughs> heck? Well, I don't know if BFI is up here. Uh, we don't care. Well, that, that, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. We're gonna call them the, the biffy now. We just show people. What the hell? I call them honey buckets down there and. They didn't have honey bucket down there. And <laughs> did I don't remember what the company was, but they're all like, the what? <laughs> oh, did they? Yeah, that's right. Like, the honey bucket. Come on, people. <laughs> that's a biffy. No, it's... Yeah, okay. Well, anyway, the, the long and short of it is they're very well uh, trained, very well qualified. So, and like... I'll tell you what, the, the, just to tell you one, for instance, of flight attendants, um, they're also very observant because we had uh, a situation where <clears throat> the, we picked up some um, ground fire in Vietnam. We had flying a DC-8, troops and cargo. It was a, a MAC mission, which military airlift command, and um, a lot of civilian uh, airliners flew in and out and of you, Vietnam all the time. You did that, were you, you did that, correct? I did that, yeah. Yeah, because I know it was always the military end of it for you flying in. And it's, okay. So the ground the ground fire tore up uh, the horizontal tail. Oh. <clears throat> and um, so um, they arranged with Japan Airlines over in Tokyo to, to um, fix the thing. So we flew it over there and waited two or three days and they, they got it all fixed. But it has to be test flown mm -hmm. before it can be put back in service if it's a flight control. Flight controls, uh, a couple other things have to be uh, tested in flight before right. 
uh, they can have uh, service restored. So um, <laughs> we were getting ready to do a test flight on the thing. And um, then after the test flight was over, we were going to fly back to uh, Yokota Air Base, which is in uh, southern Japan. Okay. And uh, the flight attendant in the back, um, they used the, the stretch eight was so long that they used uh, stairs. I don't know what stretch uh, eight is, oh, but so, go ahead. I don't know. I'm sorry, yeah. Um, I'm not. I'm not stop a, me when I use that. That big <laughs> term, like stretch eight. <laughs> the vernacular. <laughs> I just don't know. Well, it, uh, there's the DC eight, which is, is that hook up indistinguishable from a 707. It's a four engine jet. Uh, they're both about the same size, and also, but they stretched the DC-8 out and made it longer. Okay. And um, put larger engines on it, and it was it was a really good hauling airplane. And it was so long that they used stairways at both ends of the airplane. To and for so passengers, etc. This okay. flight attendant um, that used to stand there and welcome people on board had the presence of mind to notice that there was a little triangle painted on the fuselage and that usually that big flat thing <laughs> big, it's it's as big as a wing on a Cessna <laughs> and um, in fact you could land a Cessna on that thing um, that thing used to line up with that little triangle mm. and so she called and said uh, and which is one of our pre-flight items uh, explain that um, the the flight engineer when he's going to do his walk around in the airplane uh, especially since there was work done on right. that particular thing you you put the our trim indicator at zero and there that trim indicator is there to tell us um, what position the stabilizers the stabilizer is in so he puts it at zero when he does his walk around he gets a visual on the leading edge of the uh, horizontal tail lines up with that triangle. Oh, okay. So you don't, yeah. So she calls up and says, you know that little triangle um, and that uh, big wing back here um, don't line up. That'd be an issue, isn't it? So <laughs> right away we look and sure enough, the thing's on zero. And so it had been zeroed up, but it wasn't, it wasn't correct in the proper position and we got to uh, you know of course we called maintenance back out there and said you got you got to do something about right. this right and fortunately it wasn't a long drawn out process they they could just adjust some cables and, and all go, this well, then you go back they and had through. they hadn't um, right they hadn't done their checklist obviously yeah. somebody hadn't so <laughs> but before you got off the ground though we figured it out that um for each degree of stabilizer, it it neutralizes three degrees of elevator. So we we fly the airplane up and down with the elevators, okay. and then the thing is trimmed up for hands off flight with the stabilizer, and and the elevators remain at zero at neutral. So you only have. Um, you have 12 degrees of of um, elevator authority from stop to stop. Okay. That's as much as if we're okay. pulling back on it. That's that's all we're going to okay. get. The stabilizer, however, you can you can uh, use the stabilizer to help you. Okay. And, uh, See, I'm way past me on this. I just thought you flew up. Okay. Well, the, the, <laughs> there's way a lot to it. I was hoping to <laughs> explain to the folks how, but Please. I, I shouldn't explain to the folks. I should just roll with it. Anyway, it was going to take um, yeah, 12 degrees of, of our elevator, our controls, mm -hmm. to overpower what was back there. And the thing was far enough out of whack that it would have been impossible for us to get the nose of the airplane down. When when we took off, the, the nose of the airplane would have just kept going up oh. like this mm. until the airplane just fell off a crash. Ouch. Yeah. That wouldn't have been good. We would have lost the airplane. 
if yeah. she hadn't called right. caught the beat said, the triangle uh, and so <laughs> so anyway that's uh, you know flight attendants are um, uh, they that's are part of their job very well qualified individuals to be there makes sense so there you i get it i want i just learned a lot of things and then they told you I'm so lost, but you'll explain that to me later. Well, I, I'm sorry. No, I, I, I'll, I'll try. I'll try you, to avoid that. You try to. Simplify I was trying to it. censor myself along the way. You try to simplify it for the, the slow people around right here. <laughs> but let's let's tell the folks <laughs> how to get into aviation. Yeah, and uh, and uh, to continue with your question about the similarities and differences. Yes. Between when I got right. hired in, in the mid sixties, what you went through, and yeah, and um, requirements and now, now and definitely, and um, the, the, the aviation careers themselves have have taken on a life that they didn't have back then. Um, there, there was no such thing as an aviation degree. There was. Um, you know when that kind of came around? I don't. Okay. Um, Google that somebody the, the one you know. the one that I know uh, has always been around uh, is Emory Riddle uh, it's uh, started out as a flight school and, and um, you know it grew in scope uh, and it was teaching um, all various levels of piloting and so on and so forth Where was that based on it? and then they started training executives that probably uh, and I don't even want to. Uh, if if I said Emory Riddle was uh, starting to uh, train executives and and people who ran IT and all that stuff for the airlines, uh, if I said the '80s and they actually started in the '70s, I would ballparking. Be We're not worried service. about exact. I'm not worried about exact. Just wondering, you know, ballparking but, when. But Emory Riddle now, uh, uh, they're at, at the forefront of aviation stuff, and I, I know a lot of other operations will uh, disagree with me. But um, boy, they've been pioneers in that in that field of training, training you, people for airline jobs. Are you aware? Here's a trick question. I don't know. If you, you, were they the first one that helped or put the? Uh, I can't think. Of, the actual degree or the training to clarify that's required, or do you know? I don't okay. know that that's answer we'll that. Have, um, we'll have to I, that. I do again. know that the um, the airlines are um, back to that thing where they they want a, a college degree uh, for their pilots, mm -hmm. but they're also getting college degrees for their uh, their other people, the people who work in um, sales marketing um the executive that's supposedly make, things. make them more knowledgeable supposedly and, not always. you know uh, aviation is a it, it, it's a an equipment intensive oh, I would thing yeah. so it it has a uh, huge capital outlays so they have to have people that understand that uh, and and they have to you know sometimes they don't buy the best airplane because it's cheaper. Hmm. If you're if you're gonna buy you, I'm not saying if you're gonna buy a hundred twenty five million dollar airplanes, mm -hmm. and the competition isn't as good an airplane, but they're twenty million a copy. Mm -hmm. um, chances are you, mm -hmm. you might have to mm -hmm. you might have to stoop down. Mm -hmm. You know, and it happens. Um, yep, yeah, we've got. Mm -hmm. I've not, I, I want to say things, Brandon, but I'm, Brian, I have so, a question for Mark at this point. So, now and then, the, when we talked to you before, we had talked about obstacles to get training and stuff like that. So, when you're doing, getting your pilot's license, you have to have so many hours of flight time, right? But then do you have to have so many hours after you get your license before you can get like say get a job at southwest or something or commercial pilot or is there is it different yeah and that's that's really determined by market forces um like right now they're they are having uh, a hell of a time 
getting people, uh, enough people to take care of the retirees. And you know, the, every time a guy retires, he leaves a, leaves a hole in, mm -hmm. the, in the lineup. Yep. And uh, so it, when, when there's a lot of pilots out, like uh, after Vietnam, there was a, a, a dearth of pilots out there. And that drove the hiring requirements up. Uh, where it used to be, you had to have a commercial and instrument rating and, and 500 hours um, in anything. Right. You know, then it, it evolved to, uh, you had to have 5,000 hours before they'd give you the application to fill out. Mm. And, and then out of that 5,000 hours, their next question is how much of it's jet time? Well, that's, <laughs> it's all Cessna 150 time, but uh, oh, well, thanks. Right. Thanks for stopping by. Right. <laughs> you know, and um, how much SST time do you have? <laughs> you know, the, uh, and there was a joke, um, and I'm happy to see this backfired on Eastern because Eastern was uh, always kind of like arrogant. Um, as far as company personalities go, the company persona of Eastern was arrogance, huh. and uh, just like you, Ryan, you're arrogant. And they, like they used to, you know, when Neil Armstrong took over um, as the um, CEO, um, the the joke was uh, they don't care how many flight hours you got; they want to know how many moon landings you have. <laughs> You know, oh yeah, all right. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so well, they, they and of course, that, that they, you know, better. their arrogance, uh, just like Pan American, just it drove them out of business, because when deregulation happened, they, they, they were so mired down in vice presidents that, mm -hmm. um, you know, there was there was no recovery for right. them. Um, couldn't put Humpty back together again. And um, if you if you took the list of airlines right now and went back to 1960 with that, I don't, nobody would recognize any of the I, names on that list except Delta and American. I'm, oh. And you mean oh, Southwest? No, I'm joking. And and um, I ran across. I was looking up salaries. And has uh, that changed since the 1960s? I. Uh, well, if you factor in inflation since then, um, no. About the same, um, technically? They, they say I've, I, I got three different medians from three different sources. Mm -hmm. but they all seem to be in the mid 90,000 range hmm. um, as an average. Right, right. Um, but then captains. Uh, we're averaging 120,000 a year uh, across the spectrum. Right. And uh, so, so it, the, um, where did I go with that uh, Eastern I got you, thing? Yeah, I got you off track when they had too many vice presidents and <laughs> they <laughs> yeah, killed themselves Eastern. because of Eastern. <clears throat> yeah. Well, the, <clears throat> um, oh, they, uh, when I brought up Eastern and the, the list of names that were unknown right. back then, uh, the highest paid captains in the business right now are with JetBlue. Can you believe that? JetBlue, I mean, Jet, JetBlue is like, uh, we would we would have back then, I don't know what, how they're rated now, but they would have been a second level carrier, a regional airline. Right, right. Like, okay. like PSA was a regional airline. Uh, U.S. Airways was a regional airline, uh, and there were many, many others that all got absorbed by larger airlines. Right, and uh, it got down to where there were only probably three or four airlines left. Right. So, and and that was that was forecast when they first came out. I think it was 1986 when they came out with deregulation. And someone had written that this was going to lead to a consolidation in the business and that there was only going to be 
probably five airlines left. So I think they overshot it by one or two. <laughs> but uh, I mean, that was hard to believe. And, and it was also hard to believe that the big white glove airlines uh, like Pan Am and uh, TWA and, and all those Eastern uh, national, they all got into uh, financial trouble and went out of business. And so there's the, the construct of the business now is, is somewhat different, but the business itself is the same. But business wise, they, it can still happen to an airline today. Talking about education, um, I was surprised at the list of, uh, of um, companies like Baylor, for example. Uh, Baylor down in Texas uh, offers aviation uh, degrees. Okay. Degree in, in, it used to be aeronautics, but um, aeronautics was more of an engineering thing. Now, the aviation thing is the management people, uh, the administrators, the, oh. um, you know, right on down to the people the, that run the ticket counter. Okay. I'm not aware of it. I just figured you go and, yes, yeah, however individuals, but you, okay. Sorry. Yeah, but, well, we did have that one guest that, you know, talked about, he went to Moody Bible School and they do a, they do a flight class now. They don't do the Bible school here in, in Spokane. They have, they teach flight. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, there must so mega be... churches must make enough money. They got to huh. teach all their pastors how to fly their jets. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's, yeah, like, that's, that's right. That's right. That could be it. <laughs> they could be. <laughs> Save money and fly themselves. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and... Yeah, I, I do know that there were a couple pastors who had their own airplanes. Um, <laughs> what, we had a guest on not too long. That's when you're referencing? Yeah. Okay, that's what I find. What's his name again? Andrew. Andrew, his friend. Of, okay. Andrew, how you doing? <laughs> I know Andrew doesn't say that plane He's yet, got so. his podcast up and going, too. Maybe to yeah. show off. <laughs> Ryan brings a guest on. He's already doing better than us. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, that's what I do. Okay. I'll rub it in our own noses. <laughs> so, quick, from your, from back, I remember, I don't remember everything because it's been a few months since you were on, and you, what, where did you go where the incident happened where the upper her, overheard you, he was up second floor or something like that, where was that again? Oh, that was in Flying Tigers. Okay, thank that you. That was my start. And um, I just wanted, I like that story just because. And the big guy had a hand in that. I, right. I, I used to think there was an awful lot of luck involved with how I got, <laughs> uh, like, put in the training department and, and got discovered by a person from another airline who offered me a job because I was doing such a good job. And so, and that, there wasn't any luck there. The big guy was helping me along the way. Sure. And uh, I'd just like to acknowledge him. That's fine. So, oh, um, it, it, one other statistic that uh, I ran across. Um, now, this is a ballpark number, but. Well, wait and see. What the statistic, get, what you're talking about? To get your licenses. Um, I grab my phone and Google it. And you'll, you'll never get 5,000 hours flying a Cessna around because you'd have to be flying it eight hours a day. Right. Um, yeah, I can't imagine how. Yeah, the requirements of how. Oh, five five thousand hours is generally uh, average. Standard. Some kind of commercial operation. Okay. It's like it, you're you're putting in at least a hundred hours a month. Wow. I mean, you have to. to I'm not. See, I don't have a clue. So I'm just kind of blown away. I don't know the time frame. That's one reason I enjoy talking to you, even though I won't be doing it. But still, it fascinates me. Well, what it takes and etc. The limit for uh, domestic. Pilots is a thousand hours in a in a year in a calendar year. Okay, and um, it used to be a rolling time. So if you if you had say you were off on vacation for a um, a month, mm -hmm. you could roll that to where you could actually you could actually operate thirteen um, pay periods. 
oh. in, in okay. still be legal for okay. the 12. But it, right. okay. that's, me... that's shenanigans we used to do to pump our... <laughs> I've got another. Get but the numbers up. The number that came across when I was researching it was yeah, get your licenses would be $85,000. Now that doesn't include a, a, a packet of, of time, but then what you do is you would wind up going into charter work or commuter okay. operation. So you get your uh, hours and you get paid, et cetera. That, that's what the commuters, uh, mm -hmm. they know that they're a training ground for the, the um, major airlines. Cause, that would make sense though, I think. But their their um, pay scales have have gone up accordingly. Who um, the? So they they don't make as much as the the Trump carriers do. That's bad. Sorry, I don't know why my alarm. What the heck do I have an alarm set? Sorry, my time up. No, not at all. I, for some reason, I don't know what. I don't set alarms for usually in the afternoon. <laughs> If it's for me, I'm not here. Oh, crap. I'm late for that interview I was doing today. Shush, Ryan. Okay, I'm sorry. That was rude. So, uh, yeah, that's what you're looking at um, if you're going to educate yourself. You know, I, I use the GI Bill. Um, you know, I would imagine there's scholarships available. Um, I would be very surprised if there weren't, but I don't know. Right. I can't help anybody in that direction. Sure. Um, There's a gentleman that I worked with, and he's down in Florida, but he was in the military. He's doing aviation out of a school down there. So that's that's what I'm aware of. I don't know about the other, but that's the well, thing. Well, the, the military, the military is certainly um, uh, always has been the best place um, to get your qualifications for an airline job. Um, it's the best training there is, bar none, if a person applies themselves. Now, I haven't flown with military pilots that couldn't find their ass with either hand. And I'm serious. Did that scare you? There, there was a guy, I, I don't know if I should use this example because it might be well, too not... easy to identify the guy. He, he hired on a Capital Airways the same time I did. Okay. And the rumor went around that, hey, they hired a guy that used to fly Air Force One. Well, <laughs> this guy was so bad. He, he was such How a bad How bad was he? After uh, I no, I mean, time. This, uh, this guy was, he got complaints from everybody he flew with. And, and yet he got hired before. The, no, yeah. Well, what happened was they, they looked back into his history and he had been, he was an Air Force pilot mm -hmm. and he had been somehow finagled into um, the squadron. I, I don't know the number of it. That's fine. The yeah. guys who fly mm -hmm. um, the government jets. Sure. Um, Air Force One and all that stuff. Air Force Two, Air Force Three, you know, uh, Nancy Pelosi's... Uh, uh, private jet, uh -huh. and so on and so forth. Yeah, thank you, government. Never but mind. he was terrible. He had gone through that all that expensive training in the in the government, and the military, and I, I, either wasn't capable or um, he he was a joker. He he, um, you know, liked to gag it up and. Pull, pull stunts and stuff mm. like that, but he he didn't have what it took, and they finally let him go. Finally, yeah, after a year or so. Mm. And uh, why would it take so long for I don't know. Well, again, I'm not in the situation. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know whether. Um, Apparently, he didn't kill anybody by crashing, though. I was I. See, I was a, a co-pilot at the same time he was, so right. the chances of us flying together were nil. Lucky you. But, um, I was deadheading um, from Vietnam. I was deadheading um, back to uh, Japan. Mm -hmm. And he was on the crew that was flying um, that deadhead flight. So I was sitting in the jump seat and he was trying to make this approach into... Um, into um, Yokota Air Base, 
in Japan. And I, I mean, I could see that he was screwing up by the numbers here. And I'm wondering if the other guys, the engineer and the captain on the crew, right. I was wondering if they were seeing it too. And so finally this guy started saying, um, hey, uh, you know, you should be getting this thing down. You know, let's, let's saw it off and you right. know, <laughs> otherwise we're gonna look like a lawn dart. And so- uh, Somebody else was paying attention. Uh, you know, it was like, I, I was surprised and he, I think he'd been riding that reputation of being Air Force One pilot. Yeah. He, he was never an Air Force One pilot. He was in the squadron that operated those airplanes, right. but he never checked right. out. Somebody that knew him told told one of our guys once that he tried many times to check out and didn't. I blame Ryan. He's messed with. <laughs> They're so still trying to get a hold of me, huh? <laughs> Well, I'd rather not. That's why you're here now that you're. Now we know. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, eighty-five grand. That that doesn't include the college. That does not. And that's, there's that's, there's that's tuition. The, the if tuition. You're gonna, of, wow. If you're gonna go through Emory Riddle or wow. uh, Baylor or so it's Duke, cheap and affordable I, for everybody. See, I can't even remember all the, but there are colleges, um, mainstream, um, regular colleges that have that those curriculums now um, to where you get a, a degree in, in aviation. And I would guess that they probably have, um, just like other, other college degrees, it, you don't focus necessarily on only flying an airplane. You, you go through the management process and the yeah. um, financials and uh, all of those kind of maintenance. That's, maintenance that's, is a huge, that's not a bad thing, but maintenance can can cripple an airline if if it's done wrong. Um, the plane could crash, and it would. Well, I don't mean I don't I mean that. Know. I mean just cost them a boatload of money. Um, you could you screw something up, and I we, we had this guy. Uh, here here I go with a side story again. Okay, but, so um, the this guy at Capital Airways was. Um, he was one of the good old boys from the good old days when it was started out as a as a flight school at Nashville. It was, you know, they had little airplanes and they taught people how to fly. Mm -hmm. And that was their forte. Well, along came um, Minnie Pearl and a couple other people from the Nashville scene that um, thought they'd like to have I'm listening airplanes. To Minnie Pearl, you know that name, right? I do. Yeah. I thought you would. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm, we're being serious. We have, there's a lot of anybody is. Well, serious. anyway, oh, um, no. go ahead. She she got involved. Um, she wanted to get a bigger airplane, like a DC three or whatever it was. Because do and, you know why? And that required because? then when you get to you start getting bigger airplanes, the FAA has bigger requirements, mm -hmm. and. Um, so, so your certificate um, is based on um, something that the government right. determines. They determine Requirements. where you can fly to, mm -hmm. what you can fly, uh, your rules of operation, mm -hmm. uh, your training requirements for mm -hmm. maintenance and pilots and blah, 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 blah. It's, it just blossoms. And so that's what they did. They, they wound up getting in there. Estes Kefauver is a guy that whose name in my generation was very well known. He was a senator from Tennessee, and he and Minnie Pearl together um, took this flight school in Nashville and got them one of only two uh, certificates, FAA certificates that cover the root root system covers the entire world. There's only two of them, huh. Capital Airways and World Airways. The rest of them are all um, like South America or south of the equator or okay. Europe only or, right. you know, um, Asia only or right. whatever. Um, so the rest of them were all um, limited in their marketing approach right. where Capital could say, where do you want to go? <laughs> you know, and How'd that make so they got this thing going 
as a flight school. This guy that I'm talking about drove the fuel truck at the at the um, flight school. Okay. Well, he was one of the boys that mm -hmm. came in okay. as this airline, as this grew. flight school grew into an airline, mm -hmm. and um, they they started uh, flying, um, you know, DC threes and all of that, and they finally worked their way up to uh, super constellations, those big four engine propeller jobs with the three tails oh, on the okay. back. I think I've seen them. Um, and you know they started flying internationally and all this. Uh, well, he he was pulled right along with that, and he wound up as the vice president of maintenance. No, <laughs> he, I'm sorry. And this guy, <clears throat> what what started my example was uh, I mentioned that the trouble that maintenance department can get you in. We um, flew a, a a flight into. Uh, from Anchorage to Yokota Air Base in Japan, which we crew changed there, and then that airplane was going to take the passengers on to Vietnam and back. Okay. And um, our our crew got on um, a, a deadhead flight over to Okinawa, and we were going to fly um, a flight out of Okinawa, and um, <laughs> so. <laughs> just before we got on the airplane, they said, not so fast, not so fast, we need you. So they brought us back, and the airplane that we had brought in <clears throat> blew an engine on oh, takeoff. Oh, wow. Thing caught fire and mm -hmm. blew up and all of that. So they, they got it stopped and did everything they were supposed to do. And so... The, the logical thing was to three engine ferry this thing over to Tokyo to have JAL, Japan Airlines, put an engine, a new engine on okay. it. I mean, it's expensive. I would but imagine. <laughs> engines Anywhere. Are, though, just the core of the engine's a million bucks. Oh, gee. You know, not not including the rest of the stuff. And that would have been the logical thing. Right. And we thought that's what they were going to have us do. So what they have you do? What they have us do was their main maintenance, their main whole facility was um, south of Nashville in a place called Smyrna. And um, Smyrna's famous now because they have a <laughs> big Nissan plant there. Okay. Huge Nissan plant there. Uh, they had nothing there before except this airport. And that's where their headquarters were at Smyrna. They wanted us to ferry, three-engine ferry this airplane from... Japan to, to Smyrna to put their own engine on the okay. thing. Wow. And <laughs> first of all, second of all, third of all, it was it was not legal because uh, to do a three engine ferry flight, you have to have clear weather at both your departure airport and your arrival airport. Yeah, there's a distance okay. there. Well, <laughs> one of our stops, the part we were gonna fly was from Japan to Anchorage, Alaska. Okay. <clears throat> then we would crew change there. Another crew would take it on to Tennessee. And so the airplane was going to be out of service for several days. Right. <clears throat> and I don't know how many flights they had to subcontract out. Oh, <laughs> to, yeah. And, and the fuel alone to fly that distance. I mean, I don't, I don't even know how much it would be, but... Um, his when he was asked about it, he he just said, "Oh, the Japanese were trying to rip us off. They were going to charge a big price." Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, they can charge anything they want because it's still cheaper than going to Tennessee with yeah, one, them. Yeah, the, the actual, <laughs> but yeah. that's the kind of uh, decisions this guy makes, and that's the kind of decisions that airlines can't afford nowadays. You right. did something like that nowadays. They're the, the they'd be putting padlocks on the doors the next day. I would imagine. So <laughs> I I don't know how they got through. That's because uh, th those kind of things are just um, um, just nutty things, and so it's a good thing that they've gone to the college degree thing requirement. 
but not because it's a college degree, but because it's a degree in aviation that specializes in airline business, the business of an airline. Yeah. It, it specializes in not making bonehead maintenance decisions. <laughs> it, you know, it, it teaches you um, yeah, okay. how to be the CFO of, a, of an airline. And you're going to have to order or be in a part of ordering next generation airplanes. Right. And um, so, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a huge deal. And just to have college degree you know uh, your basket weaving or right you know your I, okay um, yeah your drag racing or whatever your degree's in um after as a qualification to, make, to get to become a pilot right that's nonsense they need to specialize and they're doing it now i i noticed that they're they're really doing that um aviation degree thing you can get into the airlines without a degree and you do it the way other most civilians have to do it you have to take a, a job flying a rubber dog shit somewhere um, we used to have <clears throat> they don't do it anymore but we used to fly um, bank checks you know how everybody got their checks came back in the mail oh, yeah. in, their, in their statement back in the old days in the old days <laughs> and those checks were processed at a place and then they were uh, put on an airplane and flown back to wherever right. mailed these things right. out. Um, that's why a check took four or five days to to uh, clear. When right now they can do it right yeah, at the point of sale. Right. <laughs> but um, <laughs> you know that's that was a dangerous job, and uh, uh, I I had a job like that once, and uh, when I found out that. The weight of the stuff that they were carrying was so far over gross weight of the airplane, mm -hmm. and um, uh, it was a a, a propeller um, job tail tail dragger propeller uh, D eighteen. How much uh, over was it? Majorly, majorly. No, if you How, lost an engine, you yeah, were that's why I was wondering. If, yeah, yeah, if there was no. Somebody. Uh, it, usually, in a twin engine airplane. The, the saying goes, and it's fairly true, that when you lose an engine, the other engine will fly you directly to the scene of the accident. <clears throat> and so this, this thing with, um, like this airplane, when it was empty, and you pulled back an engine for training purposes, mm -hmm. it was hard to keep that thing in I mean, you were walking on the razor blade when you were um, right. trying to trying to keep that thing airborne. What, so if it was full of bank checks, right. if you had four thousand pounds of weight, um, <laughs> you were gonna die. You were gonna die, and so that was that was the only job that I actually quit. Um, the rest of them I got fired from, <laughs> <laughs> except the last one. They, they, they gave me my uh, my little um, lead crystal uh, thing. Thank you for how many years? For so many years of de undetected crime. <laughs> You've been very good. You're you're being very pro. You're not giving away certain things like you were afraid you did last time. I didn't think you said anything wrong. You were worried about some of the stories that you shared. I don't think we we have not heard anything negative. And I actually, we, we get comments once in a while, just in general, but your show, we didn't have anything, anybody attack or, or freak out or anything like that. Because I think that's what you and I talked about. You were concerned. That's one reason why <laughs> to come back, because you thought you were, people were, uh, yeah. Just come well, on, I, I've tried to hold back on the war stories. Um, it's all good. That's part of your history, and that's what, part yeah. of your life. I mean. You want to you wanna help the folks out there uh, that are interested in working uh their way up through an airline thing. Uh, I, I'm i not as current in that regard as, as someone else would be who is right. currently doing it. But but I can tell you, um, the hiring requirements then are somewhat different, and yet uh, they're only different in their flavor. 
not not in the the fact that it's it's can it's you, a bowl of chili still right but it tastes can, different can you give me an example of your off the top so i can understand i understand what you're saying i just want to actually be able to visualize what yeah can you think of something an example that it's not changed but it has changed from then to now without getting yourself in trouble uh no no okay I, okay I, I don't think any of them would nowadays even the ones where i grossly screwed up um <laughs> i told you about the uh the nasa reports uh that they had they were trying to find out um how truly safe flying was back in the i don't know uh, did, do you early remember 70s. that one? Mm -hmm. well right i don't remember that uh for some reason about i wonder if maybe it didn't get on film no it, everything gets every, from on video everything goes well there was a the long and short of it was they knew that guys would not come forward and tell them on themselves yeah typically you know like if you um were assigned to an altitude and you you flew through that altitude which i think we've all done it I haven't, but yes. So you flew through that altitude because you weren't paying attention, or uh, it, you know the automatic thing. You didn't arm it. You forgot to arm it. Right. Or you armed it and it Sometimes turned itself happen. off. Not and, you so know. you you flew through this guy's altitude. Very dangerous thing. Sure. And guys are not gonna call up the FAA and say, "Boy, I just blew an altitude off." You know, it's, they're How not gonna do that. So what they did was they offered amnesty, and this. This was administered by NASA because they had the um, the database and stuff set up for it. And so there was a questionnaire and and you could write your explanation as long or as short as you wanted, attach pages to it. And then at the bottom, um, it had your name and address and, and all of the identifying stuff. Mm -hmm. what, the, what NASA would do is once they got it they would cut that piece off so that it kept your anonymity and they'd mail it back to you okay so you they right. had you had your own copy right, right. <laughs> there was there was nothing out there in the world that identified you with that whoops right and <clears throat> so that way they got a um a good honest look at what the, the state of the uh aviation system was and because um, there were a lot of things that came to light um, through that system that never would have before and I've got a drawer full of those NASA reports and NASA reports were great because it gave anonymity to everybody like if the air traffic controller had Wrong given you um, a, a turn that would have collided you with somebody right. Um, and you halfway through the turn, uh, somebody discovered it and mm -hmm. you stopped. Right. Well, you wouldn't normally tell on yourself about that, but if the if you filed a NASA report or the uh, traffic controller filed a NASA report, it didn't matter. Everybody involved with the thing was was then right, uh, right, vaccinated. Or, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, <clears throat> yeah, and. Um, those NASA reports, yeah, some of them were um, very dangerous. Very dangerous. I had, uh, I had a seven fifty seven. I had occasion to, to talk to somebody about this the other day. I hadn't thought of it for a long time, but I was flying the seven fifty seven, and uh, we were flying into LAX. It was the middle of the night, red eye. I think it was probably. Um, one o'clock in the morning or something like that and um <clears throat> we had you know they 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 can get kind of balled up in los angeles and they start asking you to do all kinds of weird stuff with the airplane well, well and, i know uh, yes i'm aware of that <laughs> it's, sometimes they they keep you up too high and you wind up diving in now you got too much airspeed you know blah, 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 right. whatever but there was a an american airlines crash um down in uh, Colombia and it, Columbia's high altitude has mountains all around and stuff like this and 
and uh, I think they were going into Medley. Uh, I don't recall exactly. They were supposed to clear these mountains and go down and land. They'd done it a thousand times, so it was, they were familiar with it and all that stuff. What they didn't know was the um, main landing facilities were uh, out of service, the electronics. Oh. So they had this uh, beacon. Mm -hmm. Well, they were at high enough altitude that there was another beacon of the same exact frequency oh. way over here. And that that would never exist in this country because they won't yeah they, they won't give frequencies out to where they could be cross located mm -hmm. well they it was night they got um it, off toward this other fix over here oh and there were mountains between them so they're assuming <laughs> and they they realized they were in the mountainous terrain and they cobbed the power, but the airplane wasn't flying, wasn't climbing like it should. Like a 757 will go like a scalded monkey. And uh, I, I mean, even when it's heavy. I've never and, seen uh, a scalded monkey, but I'm visualizing it now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it goes up. And, uh, Does it? Are you sure? Okay, go ahead. So uh, it, the thing wasn't climbing like it was supposed to, mm -hmm. and they ultimately ran into a mountain. Oh, yeah. And so we were in this situation where we got, we, we were high and we were trying to keep it slow and and I was trying to get it down and slow up at the same time, which that's a real feat if you can do that. And the 757 has these speed brakes that are beautiful. They're big, they're like barn doors, man. When you put them up, that thing goes, whoa, <laughs> slow down. And so we're going down and the guy ahead of us kept slowing up, slowing up, slowing up, and we're catching him. So finally, the controller waved us off. Okay. So I said, okay, we'll just go around and come back and try it again. And so I noticed, uh, I pushed the power up and did a go around and the thing was not climbing. This, what's wrong with this thing? Mm -hmm. this, you know, first thing I thought of was that we'd lost an engine. Right. And so we were both, <laughs> you know, looking around the cockpit to find out what, what in the world is going on here. So anyway, it wasn't, uh, wasn't that bad because you know LA is right below us and okay. and uh, we can see everything. Right. And, you know, it's not weather's not a factor. Okay. There, there's mountains on the north of LA, but yeah. not on the south. So we went around, and we came back, and we were all. I was. We were steadied out, and I had a moment to think about what the hell is wrong with this airplane because we're going to have to we're going to have to tell maintenance that something yeah, there's that issues. this thing isn't performing right it's it's just not going and uh so we're we're talking it over the co-pilot and i are talking it over and all of a sudden i realized that the speed brakes were still up <laughs> oh all these big barn right, doors right. on the wing uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to climb around, I got, got the speed brake, like, it's like, well, here, tie your horse to this thing. Right, and, and then go, yeah. it doesn't work at all. And uh, <clears throat> so, and you're still I, in, your, in the air what I realized, that out. Well, what I realized was that with the speed brake handle out, it, it was in the dark between the two of us oh. like this. It was down here like this, and it wasn't illuminated mm -hmm. there was no light they've got this policy um <laughs> that they they at some point somebody said there's too damn many lights on in the cockpit we gotta have we gotta have a quiet cockpit they called it uh -huh. so that's the design of the the later model airplanes uh, from like 737 on up um they had if if the light wasn't there to tell you something really important, right. then, they, then they didn't turn it on. Okay. 
it's only my yeah minorly po <laughs> a problem possibly <laughs> the um the seven well let's see seven twenty seven had a light the uh, MD eighty uh, the Douglas DC nine had a light to tell you any time the spoilers were up so you know it, it, right it's it's easy enough to when you're you're using the spoilers to get down lose some altitude but now you've lost the altitude you don't mm -hmm. want the spoilers so it's mm -hmm. a nice little reminder yeah. it's a blue light for most airplanes and <clears throat> but this quiet cockpit they didn't want that blue light so they didn't have one wow so there was nothing to tell you that the speed brakes were up <laughs> and and so right at that moment i mean we both came we both said man that looks like cali um, you know columbia that looks like columbia all over again oh yeah yeah that's uh, yeah yeah because that's what happened to the guys they couldn't mm -hmm. they realized they were in the mountains and they tried to get the hell out of there and they, and they should have had the performance to do it but you assume it's, uh, that's the same, so, same thing but yeah so, yeah those are those things that and and that one i made a big deal about that i wrote a nasa report and i went into my boss about it and told him about it because i said man this is yeah. This could very easily bite somebody in the ass. It would almost bit you again, or bit, bit you after that situation. But if it wasn't for the NASA report, I probably wouldn't have told anybody about it. Right, and that's why, that's, yeah, yeah there's those where you should, the information should get out there, what you did, so it can save lives. Yeah, That's absolutely. the whole thing, and not just incriminate somebody, because whatever situation, even in that situation, it wouldn't be your fault or per se, when you're well, dealing with something, you... It's my fault. And, uh, yeah, I guess, in a way. But if you... It's my responsibility. Yes. I know. Well, yes. I could I, say it's not my fault. But, but yeah. there's ways to correct it. And was it corrected after the fact some way, somehow, within... You know what? You said there's blue lights in one, but the other planes that, didn't have... All, that would have been a really simple fix. Uh, anytime one of the spoilers was unlatched, right. um, they could put a little... Blue uh, indicator light. You would think something. And and the blue light. It's gonna help you out. Help the situation out. Yeah. It's flying. Yeah. So I had to an aboard aborted takeoff in San Francisco because of that blue light once though because um, <laughs> we were uh, in an MD eighty which is the you know what a DC nine is with the engines in the tail. Uh, yes, but yes, actually, I do. two engines, mm -hmm. not three engines, two engines two. in the tail. That's, mm -hmm. that's a DC nine. Well, they Douglas loves to stretch things out, so they stretched that out okay. and they called it an MD eighty. Okay, it's still a big DC nine, but Just electronics stretch. are a lot different. Oh, and um, <laughs> so um, taking off out of San Francisco, um, we were taken off on the cross runways. If, for what reason I don't know, but. Um, <laughs> Not the main runways that are right. Mostly, most of the time, into the wind. Well, the wind was where it's supposed to be from the ocean, and uh, so we were taking off on runway one, which gave us a real big crosswind. So as we went down the runway, I put some aileron in to hold the wing down to keep to keep right. the wing from right. popping up, and. Uh, and when that happens, it, it makes it wants to turn the airplane. So you you know you don't need all of that uh, this kind of shit going right, on. Right, right. You're yeah. You know, so right. um, I I didn't realize, but I got enough aileron in there that the speed brakes on one side came up to augment right. to help the aileron out. <laughs> and and when it did, it turned that blue light on, and the co-pilot called spoilers so i aborted the takeoff <laughs> and we got we got san francisco bay coming at us real fast you know <laughs> we're all, uh, just were you, were you, know, you doing uh, cargo or people or oh yeah we had uh I, we had a bunch of passengers okay. back there that, and uh but you know what the the, the airplane stopped uh, that'd be a good thing without no i mean it stopped without a bunch of heartache right uh, Brakes, brakes did what they're supposed to do. The spoilers came up 
uh, the ground spoilers came up and um, the reverses functioned on both engines. You're supposed to be able to stop the airplane without the aid of the thrust reversers. That's what they're certified for um, during the certification process. Okay. They don't take that into consideration for the stopping distance of the airplane. And so that's a, if, the, if they're working, if they're both working and functional, then you've got a, a real ace in the hole. There. Right, right. So it wasn't a full pucker situation, but it was, uh, it was right, definitely, what's that, mean? Can you help me out <laughs> that little blue light, little but, you know, it, it came on and it was, it was to tell us just advisory that one of the, uh, speed brakes was, uh, unlatched. It wasn't necessarily that it was up. Right. And, um, and the speed brakes on, on the MD-80 are non-consequential anyway. They're, uh, they're little dinky things, you know. <laughs> Boy, I love those, love the speed brakes on the Boeing. You know, you pull the speed brakes up and you get speed brake. That, that's a good thing. You have so much information. I don't even know if you're using some terms just that's my ignorance. I know Ryan understands all this. Oh, of course. I throw him of course. Under, you and I need to sit down. You need to educate me a little bit more on this stuff because I don't know how many of our listeners know. Under, some of the, once again, I feel silly and stupid, but I don't know this stuff. When you're talking about. Uh, yeah. I, we'll, we'll I'm talk sorry. More. I'm no. sorry. I, I, no, it's not, I'm, I'm not complaining because it makes me, makes me know there's, there's so much stuff I know I don't know. I don't claim. <laughs> but. At one time, I, I had thought about being a pilot, but then I realized I was too tall, at least for military, and my father was retired military. So, but no, it's not a bad thing. I'm not 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 knocking you. I'm knocking myself. I just want to. I personally want to understand. There's certain times, certain guests I've had on. Uh, do you remember Vince Brown? Mm -hmm. Another. I was intrigued, and I've known this guy forever. And I think he thought I was bullshitting him because, that I wanted to know more. I did. I was what he did. Yeah. <laughs> this was fascinating too. It really was. Thank you. I thought well, I was going to see. You don't know what we're talking about, but it doesn't matter. It's I'm not going to bullshit to Mark and say, "Hey, I want to learn more." If I don't want to learn more, trust me. Ryan knows me long enough for he goes, "Yeah, I don't have to bullshit and lie." I BS a lot, but that's something different altogether. I actually have questions for you that I'll save till next time. So, <laughs> All right. there'll be a next time Sounds because great. I got to educate myself. Brian, you have anything else for Mark this time around? Because I do not. No more helicopters. No more. Well, we, you know, this we're doing updates now. <laughs> All right. We're doing updates, so it's a new thing for us. So it, it depends on uh, the guest and what's going on. I mean, we don't have a standard. Yeah. Oh my God! There's a pilot showing off. <laughs> that was a nice landing. Yeah. I, I found one that had the curvature on the top. He, he, know, he knows all this flying stuff. Ask that's, me about... That's what the Bright dynamics. Brothers are famous for discovering. Damn Bright Brothers. There's that camera on top of the wing. That's, that's what made... See, yeah, I understand a little bit about that. And then you got the underneath the dragon. Yeah, I don't know much. Brian, you're closing the show. I'll take it out. I got nothing. <laughs> it's a good thing. I got it. I'm out of here. You pissed me off, Thanks Brian. for listening. Thanks for watching. Catch us next time. Uh, Please subscribe. Subscribe. Leave, Leave us a message that Don't I listen saw. to him. Don't he listen. said I'm taking you out. Not, and yeah, he just starts talking. So. I was trying to help out this one time. Yeah. Don't That's listen. all you got? That's all I got. All right. Until Come. next time. It's your life. Make it happen. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. Good luck. <laughs> Aviation is a worthy, a worthy. You've had a good life with it. Endeavor. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't want to call it a profession. <laughs>